Good evening. Now, prepare to feel like my parents because I'm about to disappoint you. Uh, why? Well, we all came here expecting a scientist, but I'm not a scientist. I'm an engineer. <laughs> now, uh, you might be wondering, what is the difference? Well, a scientist starts with a question and produces an answer in the form of a scientific journal. An engineer starts with a problem and ends with a solution. <laughs> now, for you to understand what my problem is, you first have to imagine you're a scientist. So you're working in the lab late one night, when suddenly the clouds, they don't part, they come together. You hear thunder, and from a dark smoke he, uh, cloud, smelling of sulfur, a figure appears. He approaches your desk very slowly. This, of course, is your boss. <laughs> he reaches into his pants and pulls out a hard drive, sets it on your table, and whispers into your ear, do science to this, and disappears back to the night like the eyes tend to do. <laughs> you plug the hard drive in, open, hey, there's some files. You quickly deduce that you have absolutely no idea what you're looking at, which is normal. There's someone who knows everything, and that's Google. So you go online, you look for some articles, and you finally find the perfect article. This is just from the PI, I mean, it's like... So, you read this article, you realize this is the perfect thing for me. I'm going to try to use this. Problem is, there's no download link. You keep on looking through the article, you find uh, written uh, software available by request. What does this mean? It means you have to email the authors. Okay, you spend two hours drafting a short email because you want to get the software. You send them the email, it doesn't arrive. Why? They change lives. No problems. You stalk them on social media for a few hours, find their new email address, send them the email, and they respond promptly, which in scientific terms means two weeks. Okay, so you got the software, you, it's a zip archive, you unzip it. Again, you have no idea what you're looking at. Another email, another two weeks, turns out, you're running Windows, and this only works on 32-bit Debian Linux. You're a biologist, so you have no idea what is 32-bit Debian Linux. But luckily, you have an IT guy. So you call your friends, they install 32-bit Debian Linux on your system, you download the program, it doesn't work. You need the library. You find that out after spending some hours online. You download the library, try to rent again, it's broken again. This continues a few days, you keep on installing new stuff, deleting some other, and finally you get it to work. Good. You figure out how to use the commands. Good. You let it run. You go for a cup. Come back. Still running. If the day is late, you go home and finish overnight. Come, on, come back tomorrow morning, move a mouse on your laptop. It's still working. But luckily, it's Friday. You think, hey, it's going to finish over the weekend. No problem. You spend the day in the park or whatever your job is. You come back to work on Monday, move the mouse again, it's dead. It spent all of your memory over the weekend because apparently you have to run it on a server cluster, not your old laptop. <laughs> now, uh, this is an imaginary scenario, but I can guarantee to you, parts of this have happened to every single person who has ever tried to analyze their data. Why? Well, because the software was made by scientists, for scientists. And do you know how scientists think of themselves? Like this. <laughs> do you know how software developers imagine their actual users? Like this. <laughs> so your end user should always be assumed to be someone who has no idea what they're doing, <laughs> no inclination to actually learn how to do it, and if you do something wrong, they're going to talk mad stuff about you on Twitter. So, how do I fix this? Well, I'll try to do it for a small part. Uh, first of all, why should you download something? Why not make a website? Why should you learn how to use a command line tool? Why not make the web form? Why should you own a server? What if you're poor? Simply let it run on the cloud, and that is what's my job. It's to build a web application to be used in the area of single cell genomics. What's that? Well, simple. When you take someone's DNA, you take a tissue, we look at individual cells. Why do we need to do that? Well, sometimes you only have one cell, if you're working with bacteria, let's say, or a tumor. Why? 
Well, sometimes tumors have different kinds of cells. If you target only one kind, you're giving an advantage to the other tumor cells. So it's very important to know everything that's inside you. So I might succeed with this, I might not. However, I might inspire scientists to stop building tools for other scientists and start building tools for the people. Thank you.